Hi everyone, it's Dasha Dave here again and I'm back for another crafty video. So, this touch, just by the way, I need to just point out that my voice is intermittent at the moment. I've got a very horrible, scratchy, sore throat at the moment. I'm not feeling particularly well, but I will try and plough on and see how we go. So, if my voice fades in and out, please just let me, you know, know that you couldn't hear me and I'll try and maybe do it again or whatever but I'm really sorry you've just got to bear with me I'm trying to just plow through so I did say we were going to do some lino printing um, <clears throat> and we are going to do that um, but I have started some already so um, what I've done is I've made um, a mess somewhere no <laughs> I've made a logo for Margot's, um, the company that Margot works for. So you know Margot, who is my character, um, that I'm developing this whole, you know, plethora of things for. So I've made her a, a logo. Now um, I'll come to why I did this off camera in a minute, but I'll show you what I did. So I, um, I developed a logo. So it's because it's victory mining it just so happened that the v and the m so it kind of sit together so this is the v and this is the m um and then i put a pickaxe in it so it's, i'm not the best drawer in the world um but you know i can digitally draw so i was able to do it on here so this was just a, like literally this took me three minutes i sat downstairs last night and i thought ah, i could do this and i just did it so um so then I needed to turn this into a um, something I could transfer onto the lino. So what I did was I took some tracing paper and I traced it. So I basically shrunk it down to a, a more manageable size, put it literally laid it on my um, iPad and traced around it. Okay. So then I went from that to putting it on here. And oh, I'll use, I've got some carbon paper, I'll use some carbon paper on the back. No, it doesn't transfer onto the lino that I've got. So um, I tried the old method of colouring in the back and then drawing it through and you couldn't see the lines on here. So um, I, I had to go a different down a different route and that was that um, I used some, um, I used a piece of, uh, I think it's called, graphite paper it's it's very brittle but it's made of basically pencil lead and i use that to transfer that onto here okay so and then i cut this out so whatever you do whenever you make something like this and it's that way round whenever you stamp it it'll be the other way so it's the, the logo is this way round so i'll stamp the logo for you in a second and you can see that now what i did do is i did cheat and i bought myself some soft lino blocks so these are made for kids they are made to be really easy to carve because this stuff this is the fabric back stuff this is very hard to carve this is proper linoleum we call it in the uk we call it lino but like it's linoleum um we just shorten it to lino um so this is notoriously hard to carve and is also quite dangerous because you're constantly holding it still and dragging your blade and you end up slicing yourself your fingers off there are some stops that you can buy that means that they kind of like butt up against the edge of it and you can carve but when you use this stuff you don't need that because it's really easy to carve and I'll show you how easy it to carve it is um, I'll use a piece of this off cut that I've got here so, so literally this is how easy it is really simple very easy to carve no pressure really needed so that's how easy it is so you can see just how simple that is now i have linked in my description because i'm trying to build my amazon um affiliate uh program so you know i'm trying to get accepted etc into the program therefore i can you know make a little bit of money off any of anything that you buy through amazon so if you click the link in the description there's one sorry there are two links for the uk and there are two links for um the us the links for the uk are for, um a kit that um includes the the tools um 
some additional tools, not as many as this, but a, a selection of additional tools. Um, you also get um, some of the gray printing stuff. I believe you get a, um, one of them, whatever they're called, these roller things, um, and um, some ink. The American one, you get um, a very similar selection, but it's not it's not made by, I can't testify to how good it is because it's not made by the same people from, from as the UK one. The ones that I've got are the ones that the UK kit is. Um, I've also linked um, to just a pack of the really soft stuff. So for both the UK and for the US. Again, the US one, I haven't tried the US one, but it did assure me that it was easy to carve and it was safe for kids. So that's the one I've linked. So I've given you a kit and I've given you a pack. Now remember, I do get uh, um, money from the proceeds of it. You don't pay any extra. In fact, actually, there's um, Amazon Prime is coming up and um, some of them are, may well be in the um, Amazon Prime deals. Um, and to get Amazon Prime, you need to be a member of Amazon, obviously. Um, but you can get a 30 day trial. So um, and so again, all of the links are in the in the description, but I do get a percentage of the sale. Like I say, it doesn't cost you anything extra. All they do is they just credit me for having promoted some of their stuff basically so there you go so i literally I, I get a very small percentage we're not talking like i'm not going to be you know moving to a luxury island anytime soon i am going to stay have to stay more hydrated today because my voice could possibly go on us so you just need to be aware of that so um <coughs> Now I know that somebody commented um, that my sound, uh, they can't hear me. Now I haven't had anybody else say that they can't hear me and I have watched back through just a standard YouTube, not through my own YouTube and I didn't have any problems hearing but um, if you are, if people do have problems hearing me on a normal day, not when my voice is going obviously, um, then again, just let me know in the comments. I'm just interested to hear whether you, you're having the same issues as this other lady is. So, um, so I will just show you what this um, stamp looks like. I'm just going to find some, um, some paper on which to stamp, so you can see what what it looks like. So, um, you know, it's not perfect it's hand carved and what do you expect for hand carved <laughs> also i wanted it to kind of have that kind of it's been around a while feeling to it so i'm just i didn't i'm not using any spe special ink you can get the lino ink that they you know that they provide in the kit and use that but i'm literally just using an ink pad and make using it like a stamp so you just have to make sure that if you're rubbing it down you hold it down with one hand while you rub with the other so that it doesn't move around. And there we go. That's our logo. So I did re I did develop it slightly more. I made it look like it's got a wooden handle. So this is supposed to be a pickaxe. So it was the Victory Mining with a pickaxe. And also I thought that this was interesting because it made it look like two mountains, which is where you find... Um, you know minerals and things so um anyway so i was quite chuffed with, the, with that logo bearing in mind it only took me three minutes to do um so i thought we'd do something else on here now what i wanted to do was do something very grid like something quite easy to do well it's not, none of it's ever going to be easy because you, you're carving stuff and you can't ev ever get perfectly straight lines when you're carving um but i'm going to do my very best to get uh, you know, a good image. So I'm trying to see if this, I don't think this was the pen that I used, but I don't know it'll, it'll do. It's a pro marker, it's fine, it'll do. So I just wanted to have some grid lines as a stamp. So some, that's something that's going to be a little bit easier. In fact, actually, I don't even think I want it to be this big. I want it to be like a stamp that she can approve or reject things with. So I'm just going to cut this down 
um, and like as like I say, it, re it cuts really easily. So you can you you can do it with your your blade or a pair of scissors or whatever, just to cut them down. So there we go. So I'm going to is that sort of sort of square? I, well, a rectangular it wouldn't be square. It's a longer side, um, two longer sides and two shorter sides, so it can't be square, can it? They'd have to be all the same size. Shut up, Dave. Stop being pedantic. Um, so. <laughs> What I thought was, if we have like a border around the edge, is that going to be too big? Mm. Do I want it to be smaller? I do not know. Mm. Let's get. Let's just do this and then see what it looks like. So you kind of want something like an alcohol ink marker. That means that it will. It's got like a very plasticky finish to it so you you want something that will write on it now I did struggle to get um, carbon paper to go to work on it but you might be able to do that so, so that's fine if you can but I couldn't so I'm not going to recommend it so I'm going to do that around the edge and I think I'm going to keep that edge on so I'm going to colour anything in black that I want to keep and then anything that's left blue will be the thing that gets removed so in fact actually with it being a pro marker there's probably yep yeah, there's a chisel tip on the end that's easier so, and then once we get carving you'll be able to see just how easy it is oh my gosh my voice <coughs> so, um, so I was thinking, well, I was thinking and then everything hurt because I started thinking. So I thought I'd leave space at the top for like an approved, like word, because I'm not going to, not even going to try and carve letters out using this technique. So, um, going to make a sort of a shape at the bottom here a sort of a shape well it's definitely going to be a shape it's not necessarily going to be one you recognize <laughs> and then have that go maybe all the way down to the bottom and again sorry if my head comes into view um, but I have to I have to keep my head. I've I've tried living without it, and it's just you know it's just not it's not acceptable. I can't get on in life. <laughs> Although people do think I've lost my head most of the time. So, um, so I was thinking maybe a kind of a grid. She could have space to be able to do a signature. So this is a very. Um, Not, it, there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I'm just making making boxes. And that's going to be the bit where she signs. Then she can put, I don't know, the date in there. Um, and she can put, oh, let's put, let's make that line go all the way across. And you could be making nice patterns and all sorts of things, but that's basically that's what I'm going to do. So everything that's black can stay, and everything that isn't black can go. So, <clears throat> so this there are various different tools. I don't know what they all do. So this is more. This is more. Um, this is a narrower one. It's got a narrower V, so it's good for making cutting detail. This is better for kind of clearing out bigger surface areas um, and we've got a variety of different things some of them are duplicates oh they've got numbers on them as well so oh, some of them have numbers on them um, yeah so like there's various different fine detail things and scoopy things and there's a, a blady thing and there's a, a couple of blady things and yeah, yeah so that one looks like it should have a, a, a genie in it it's like an oil lamp 
Um, yeah. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to stick with the ones I've got. Now I'm not an expert on this, so please don't like be. Oh well, Dave said <laughs> because I might have said I mean to say I knew what I was talking about. So. I'm using the edge of the ruler to be kind of give me a bit of a straight line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a gouge a bit around all of the edges first not trying to take too much off in one go it's a bit like when you're cutting paper don't try and cut all in one go do it over a few attempts and don't expect perfection again like any any kind of craft don't expect perfection because there is no such thing as perfection but in this especially this is not you're not going to get the most straight edges and the perf if you want perfect stamps then you're probably going to have to get them made for you they're just this is just kind of a bit of fun so like you could be making something more artistic like i said so, you know, um, carving leaves and all sorts of things. But because I want it to be for Margot, she has no use for a leaf stamp in her job. She's far too busy to be stamping leaves. So, <clears throat> Sorry, I keep having to clear my throat because it's getting very sore it's been sore for the last while well, i woke up yesterday with it and i was i just couldn't wonder think what's happened because i've not as far as i'm aware i've not been near anybody that's been poorly um but you never know well, there's loads of people at work that have kids so kids tend to bring their own germs don't they to the party Maybe do it like that. Um, and if you're a parent or a you know a grandparent or whatever, get off. If you're a parent or grandparent, you're probably more likely to pick up all the bugs. You don't necessarily get them all. You might just be a carrier, and that's because you know, you've had multiple exposure to things. I used to get a lot of illness. Um, and then I pe then it petered out, and I was I was kind of immune to everything for a long time, um, because I used to be a teacher. So, and when you're exposed to lots of different people from different backgrounds and whatever, you get you pick up a lot of bugs initially, and then then that stops happening because you become immune to it all. Um, but because uh, I don't teach now, and I see I don't get up close and personal to many people these days I tend not to pick things up like I used to so hopefully you can see what I'm doing I'm kind of going up doing a line on either side of this black line and I've just thought that signature will be the other way around won't it the box will be the other side so that's fine that's fine So whatever you do remember it's going to work and be a reverse image he says not remembering it was going to be a reverse image but you know i thought i'd let you know so that you could be prepared <laughs> um so i stayed over at vic's house yesterday that's the first time i've stayed over since he moved in um and it, it's a lovely house it really is i'm so so pleased for him because he really loves it as well which is nice um, it's the first time he's kind of had a place of his own so I'm glad he really likes it it also means that we get I know this is going to sound terrible but time apart which I think is really important that you spend time apart from your partner it's what makes the, the relationships last longer that you're not in each other's way etc you know 
you can, you can follow your own hobbies and interests and things. Because although he likes, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have a craft, uh, have a craft, and he like, but he does like craft. He um, because he doesn't have one of his own. I feel like I'm, especially when he's only here a few days a week. I feel like I feel bad for like just coming upstairs and doing videos. So. So it's nice to have time apart from him so that I can crack on with things, do more videos for you guys. So I try to film my videos on a Sunday. So that means then when I see him on a Monday, I don't have to, you know, say I'm gonna, I know, I know you've just arrived, but I'm going upstairs now and film things because that's not fair I don't want you to become a craft widow <laughs> it's difficult though isn't it when you've got when you've got a partner that I mean like, like he, he, he wouldn't be upset that I came upstairs in any way because he understands that it's very important to me but it's difficult when you've got a partner that doesn't craft So and I guess it's even more difficult if you've got a partner who doesn't craft and doesn't understand why you craft. So I will say this: you take your time doing this stuff. That way then you're going to get more accuracy and also you're not going to lose a finger, yours or anybody else's. And try to do it when it's not really warm outside like a, I'm doing today so it's it's overcast today so clouds are rolled in because we had storms yesterday and we we're expecting storms today however it's still very muggy um, I, don't, I don't think I ever did establish whether people knew what muggy meant close you know warm warm with no air so, um, <clears throat> so I know that we're expecting more storms today. So, so there are times when it kind of get, gets caught on things, and you're thinking, "What is it catching on?" It's usually your tool on the edge of the thing. So that's what usually stops it from going where you want it to. or as fast as you want it to, or as smoothly as you want it to. If you are ripping bits off, don't try not to rip towards your image, otherwise that will just come off too. Like I say, this is just so easy to carve. It's just like cutting into butter. much easier to carve than that grey stuff. I mean like when we when I did it, I did it back in the I don't know, what did I do it at junior school? I, don't know, I think I, I think I did it at senior school, so when I went to high school. Um I mean back then it wasn't called high school. Um but yeah I think I did it then. But we were carving lino tiles then. So, but everybody had line, lino tiles back in the, well, this was the 80s when I was at school, but I know it kind of, the kind of, the ethos of lino printing came about from the 70s, I think, or the 60s even, I don't know, somebody, I mean like, you know, I'm sure it was around before then, but I think it was a big thing, it was a big wave, a bit like tie-dyeing and that sort of thing, making your own crafts. The ability to do was, you know, very prevalent. You know, you could make your own things. You didn't have to rely on other people to make it. Was it a, a push against all mass production? I don't know. I mean, don't know what brought about the culture, but 
you know, that's the only reason why I know what it is, what lino carving is, because I did it at school. I think that some of you as well said in the comments when I said last week about doing some lino printing that you haven't done that since you went to school, so I guess it was a schooly craft. Although sharp implements and children, well, not really the two things you want to put together, really, but like, never mind. Especially not in the comprehensive school that I went to. That's a recipe for disaster, that. You couldn't give them pins without them wanting to stab you. Oh no, it was a junior school. I just realised because I can see myself doing it and I can see the art room I was in and that was my junior school, so. So that was the, before I went to high school, so. Yeah, well, I, I, you don't want to give teenagers, angst teenagers, sharp pointy things. It's bad enough giving them needles and things, pins in the sewing room. So I'm hoping this will look a bit aged as well. So a bit like the way that that, um, the mining stamp has come out. So it's got a, you know, when you've got a really old stamp and they start to degrade, that's kind of what I want it to look like. Now, if you are using the grey style linoleum or the hard linoleum, do not put your hand in front of this thing because it only has to jar and you slip and it will go through your hand. So this is the bit I'm not particularly good at. I guess you can you could go round with a, a blade and cut that bit off so that when you cut up to there it just falls off but That would require forethought. Thor thought. I don't think like Thor. Forethought. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, so, like I say, it might not be the most perfect in the world, but it doesn't have to be. Trying a different technique now. I'll go down here and hopefully these will all chip off. They did. Better than I thought that was going to work. So anything when you that when you ink it, you'll be able to tell what it's going to pick up and what it's not going to pick up. So what you think you might have carved away sufficiently might need whittling down a bit, which is why I liked. So I, I will say I did make a, a, so this is the one that I was the final version, but I made this one, which I wasn't happy with. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, when you ink it, you can see if it gets covered in ink, you know that that's going to be transferred onto your paper so just bear that in mind you might need to carve a bit more off it i know it's gone very quiet <laughs> concentrating so i'm doing i'm concentrating I'm just going to cut off any of the big ridges that are sticking out. Obviously, because this doesn't have a, a backing to it, there's that always that possibility you could just keep going until you make a big hole in it. So, but you'll you'll love carving this stuff comparative to the other stuff. So let's give it an ink and see what happens. So it looks like it's going to be picking some of those ridges up. So I'm just going to get rid of these. 
might get a bit messy. Oh, come on. So, a bit messy. I'll move my fingers now. Try and touch your face, Dave. Let's see what this print's like. Use this again. <coughs> So I just stuck that one to a piece of cloth and then stuck it to the um, a piece of board. Oh, you know what? That's not, that's not terrible, is it? It's got a little bit there that needs to come out. Is that that side on? It's there. That's the good thing to do as well not just ink it but stamp it and see what it looks like you might realize that there are bits that are going to be sticking standing out um, so that's that bit there and it's got a couple of lines here that are picked, it's picked up <clears throat> And like I say, I'm not looking for perfection. Another line there that's got a bit of ink on it. On there. A bit there as well. Try and get a finer one. That's all right, I'm happy with that. Yeah, cool, happy, 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 happy. So, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some letters and then we can have an approved in there and then she can sign it and date it. Like I say, it's not perfect, but it's never going to be when you're hand carving something. So, let's just see, should we just have a, a quick play as well? And see if I can, uh, what I'm good, what, what I'm good at now. See if I can draw a. Let's try and do a leaf. A very simple leaf, and with some veins in. No, let's not draw the veins in. Let's just do those. <laughs> Like I say, I'm no, no freehand drawer. I'm just going to do this. It's not very good, Dave. And because it's nice and soft, this stuff, you can really do curves which you can't, I find really hard to do on the grey version. I can reshape this now because, well because I can, I'm going to. <laughs> right. I want that to be a bit thicker. This, the, all of this outer bit will be cut off anyway, so. Oh, I'm 
I'm not an artist, you can tell. If anybody's ever in any doubt. I think I've gone over the line somewhere there. Oh well. If you're particularly sensitive to f smell, you, these don't smell the best. They smell a bit chemically, a bit oily actually. A bit. I'm sure they're probably made of the same stuff as linoleum, which is a isn't it that a byproduct of the petrochemical industry? I think it is. And don't quote me. I think I'm not going to go with a wavy look. I'm just going to go with a a nice, easy, straight lines thing. I'm no, <laughs> no artist. That's that probably people are going. That's not a leaf. Well, no. But the only thing I could think of spontaneously to draw, got to cut out. Very quiet, isn't it? So, <laughs> the concentration. I'm trying to save my voice as well. I've got another two videos to do after this, so I'm hoping that it's not going to not going to be only audible by dolphins by the time I've finished. So there we go. I'm not even going to do around. I'm just going to leave it like that and maybe go for, go for a, not red Dave, a green for a leaf. Is that too obvious? I'm, I'm even going to leave it with the, the inky bit around the edge. So your br oh brayer, that's what those rolly things are called. <laughs> your brayer, see, I knew it'd come to me. Um, is useful for when you're doing it with proper ink because you put the paper onto the thing and then brayer over the back of it. Um, but I'm using this like a stamp. There you go. Like I say, not the best leaf in the world, but we'll leave it at that. <laughs> So there you go. So that's a bit of lino printing. Honestly, you can do anything. So you can make logos, you can do all of those. For me, it was being able to make something that resembled a stamp because otherwise, how else are you gonna make a stamp? I mean, like I do have a Silhouette Mint, which I've used maybe once, and I could make it on there, but again, you have to create a design to be able to transfer it's a very convoluted process and I couldn't think of any other way to do it really so so this is where we are so we've got some we've got the the mining company stamp logo there and we've got this and now we've got a um a leaf so it's actually not that way up to that I think or you could have it any any way up you like so but there you go so I hope you give that a go and uh and you know let me know if you do so thank you very much for watching my name is dash of dave don't forget i love you all without exception until you give me a reason not to so don't give me a reason not to and i'll see you all in the next video take care folks lots of love lots of hugs and a big kiss from margo take care bye, bye.